the Nazca mummies. What are they? Where did they come from? Are they real? Are they fake? What is real? What is fake? I'm biologist Wild Trees, and I'm going to be talking about this presentation that was put on by Jaime Mosan and some other people about the Nazca mummies. It's kind of long. It's like an hour and a half long. Some of it's in Spanish. Some of it's in English. I speak Spanish. I'm going to watch the whole thing. I'm going to try to edit it down so it's very entertaining and you find out what you need to find out about this video. Thanks so much for watching. All right. So starting the presentation, what are we talking about? He seems to be discussing some controversy that came earlier where I think he said the minister of culture from Peru um, got some dolls and he said they were fake. And Habib Masan is saying, yes, they're fake. They're obviously fake, but he's saying the ones he has are different. They are real. And he's showing some pictures to try to uh, demonstrate that. The other thing that I want to, this is how I want to get to the truth. One of the ways I'm going to get to the truth is I want to uh, get all the names of all the scientists that are mentioned, doctors as well. Now, then with the name, I should be able to look up the credentials of these scientists to vet them, to see, have they published research? Is this high quality research? Because I'm very curious about who are these professionals who are looking at the mummies? Do they have a solid scientific research background? They should have a paper trail. They should have published research papers and made discoveries. Just wanted to get that out there. So I'm going to be paying attention to the names. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video where I talk about the scientists who are involved. But for now, let's continue. Um, I guess number one in general, I will say that, you know, the world of humans and our common knowledge, sometimes it does not want to change quickly. Sometimes there's resistance to major change. Things are going a certain way. There's a status quo. Some people, a lot of people are happy. Some people are not happy. Sometimes change is difficult for a society to accept. And that may be what's going on with these mummies. Maybe. Now, on paper, Jaime Mossad is saying everything right. He's saying that the DNA results are open. He said, whoever, if you can read ancient DNA, go ahead, read it. I'm not a geneticist, unfortunately, but I can look into it. I can dig deeper. He was There was a letter that was signed earlier by a university, and they said they studied it, and they thought they were genuine mummies. So what I want to do is I want to look up that university, find out about it, find out about its prestige, about its background. I want to look at the scientists' backgrounds who signed that paper. Who are they? Are they respected, legitimate scientists? I'm not saying they're not, but I want to find out more about them. So on paper, he is providing a lot of the things that I would ask for, for a new organism that is discovered. You know, I guess the one thing that's missing is he needs to, they need to just publish this thing as a new species. Huh. That's interesting. So when we discover a new species as a scientist, we usually, well, first we need a body, which congratulations, they have the body already. Uh, then they need to write a scientific paper that describes where the body was found, where the organism lives. It has to have pictures of the organism, measurements, and a complete description and a justification for why this is a new species. Okay, then it needs to be classified. It needs to be given a new species name. We may have some trouble here because if this organism does not fit into any of the families, the domains, the kingdoms, these are all classification groups of animals. Like, uh, for instance, beetles is one big group of animals. They are in the order Coleoptera. So the order, that's beetles, right? So maybe these organisms, they don't fit in an order, you know? They don't fit in any previous classification and that's okay we can make a new classification but the thing is someone has to do the work and write all this stuff down come up with a name classify it write it in a paper and then that paper needs to be published in a legitimate journal that publishes new species like this is obviously a vertebrate animal meaning it has bones so there are a lot of journals out there that publish uh, new Species of Vertebrates, Respected Journals. This paper needs to be written, and then it needs to be submitted to that journal and accepted. 
And is there bias? Here's the thing. When that paper is sent to the journal, some other scientists will have to read it. And it's kind of like they're grading the paper. They decide whether it gets published. They could tell you to change things or fix things. Those scientists will probably have a bias. I'll be honest with you. They, they probably will have a preconceived notion that there's no way this could be real and that could affect them. But if the data is strong enough, if the if the physical evidence and the paper and the measurements and the work is good enough, it should get accepted and it should be published as a new species. That's what needs to be done. Some papers have been written about this, but I'm not sure if it's that paper. I'm not sure if it's uh, the specific type of paper you write for a new species. Once again, I'm very curious about all the people involved with this discovery, the scientists. I'm very interested in the universities or institutions they work for. And I'm very interested in the papers they have published and signed in the things they have written about this organism, the scientists, the researchers. I need to dig deep into that. That's probably the next step. But anyway, those are just some thoughts. Jaime Masson is just going on about how all the data is available. I know there's a website with like 3D scans and stuff like that. Um, all these tests were done. I mean, on paper, it all looks good. Okay. I, I, it just needs to be written as a new species paper and it needs to be submitted to a legitimate journal and it needs to be accepted and published. That may be a tall order. Maybe it's not. Let's continue. All right, so Jaime Masson is showing different bodies. He's saying that all the bodies are different. They're like different individuals. He's showing scans. He's saying it's not a fake. It's not a, a llama skull. Although I think even he will admit there are fakes. Mummies out there, obviously. He's saying his are genuine. He said he wants a big United States researcher to do it. To look at him, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. United States has a lot of, like, power academically, like, a lot of respect. It would make a big difference if an American did it. But, I mean, other countries publish new species all the time. So, I I, I don't think it has to be an American. He said that some of them have a metal in them, and some of them have eggs, and there's even embryos inside of the eggs. Uh, a lot of times they refer to these things as reptiles, um, that's interesting. Are they reptiles because they have eggs? I mean, platypus, platypus is a marsupial. It's from Australia. It has like a duck bill, a beaver tail. It's got hair, but it also lays physical eggs. And I do believe an echidna does too. So some mammals do lay eggs. It's rare. So I'm not sure if they're calling them reptiles just because of the egg thing. Like I said, mammals, some mammals do lay eggs. They don't all give live birth. Interesting. And then there's this bigger body here, Maria. Maria is a larger species. I'm not sure if they're all supposed to be the same. And the younger ones, well, that doesn't make any sense because the, the little, because I was going to say, what if are the little ones supposed to be younger than the bigger ones? But then the little ones have eggs in them, which with embryos indicates that they're sexually mature. So maybe there's different types of them. It's not just one species. Also, I heard some rumors that maybe the origin of these things is from underground. There's a lot of underground stuff, you know, in paranormal literature. The fairies are thought to come from underground. Honestly, there is a lot of space under the, in the crust of the earth where things could live. Caves, for instance. Probably a lot of undiscovered caves and caverns. So, yeah, there, I'm... I, I will say right now, there are species that we have not discovered that live underground. And I will also say there are large vertebrate species that live underground in the crust that we haven't discovered. I'm just pretty sure that's true because there's a lot of the world we haven't discovered. There's a lot of animals we haven't discovered. Let's continue. Okay, this is a constitutional Peruvian lawyer. He is talking about some of the things he said so far is he's happy that the discovery was made in his country of Peru. He said he's happy there are still things in the world to discover. And I, I agree with him on both points. I think there's a lot to discover in the world still as a scientist who has made some discoveries. And it do, it is very exciting. It's very exciting to discover something new that we did not know before, but has always been there. 
it sounds like the lawyer was saying that he's going to sue a government, I believe the Peruvian government, for suppressing information. Jaime Masson is also talking about how there's a lot of bodies. They're all desiccated from this uh, diatomaceous earth. They're being found in these special uh, caves. They're all dehydrated. But he's saying there's more bodies to come. More bodies. He said there's a lot of bodies coming out. 